Check this out. It's a complete ocean of cars. It's truly staggering. This is what the infantry situation looks like at Chongqing Chang'an Automobile. Since last year, this figure has surged a staggering 1.06 million units. This alone is a wake-up call to the industry. Let's delve deeper and examine the case of the industry titan, BYD. In the grand panorama of 2022, they produce close to 1.8 million vehicles. However, the number of insured vehicles falls short at 1.58 million, quietly spelling out the fate of over 210,000 vehicles, accumulating dust in warehouses. If that doesn't raise eyebrows, consider this. In the first quarter of this year, BYD has reported an insured volume of 441,000 units. However, the production report from January to March shows nearly 548,000 units. This suggests an additional accumulation of more than 100,000 vehicles into the already bulging inventory. One might wonder, could BYD's sales have bounced back this year? The reality is a brutal blow. In the first four months, their sales increased by a mere 20%, achieving only 70% of their sales target for this period. If such a leader is ensnared in such a predicament, it paints a rather grim picture for the remainder of China's new energy vehicle enterprises. China's new energy vehicle market finds itself in troubled waters, mired by sluggish demand and towering sales pressure. Meanwhile, global competitors like Foxconn and Tesla are orchestrating strategic deployments worldwide, akin to bring tempest intensifying the competition for China's new energy vehicle exports to a ferocious level. Foxconn, a manufacturing leader employing over a million people in China, is shifting its electric vehicle EV supply chain overseas and distancing themselves from the Chinese Communist Party. In June this year, Foxconn's chairman, Liu Yangwei, stated in a BBC interview that the move was due to the EV industry collecting and transmitting large amounts of data related to national security. Foxconn owns its proprietary MIH platform in the EV field and collaborates with NVIDIA on autonomous driving research, and it's contemplating moving its EV manufacturing business to North America, Indonesia and Thailand. This decision highlights their optimism towards the EV market in Europe and America, as well as doubts about the Chinese market. On the other hand, Toyota has disclosed its solid-state battery technology and plans to initiate mass production by 2026. Honda has also announced its plan for commercialization of solid-state batteries by 2028. The new battery, which requires only 10 minutes of charging to drive 1,200 kilometers, addresses a critical shortcoming in electric vehicles, posing a challenge to local Chinese EV manufacturers. Tesla is actively seeking new global production bases in response to the United States Inflation Reduction Act, which grants a $7,500 tax credit only to new energy vehicle manufactured in the US. Therefore, Tesla is exploring new production sites, including Mexico, India, Europe, South Korea and Indonesia. The Shanghai factory may export exclusively to non-European and American countries, or not export at all, diverting its 1 million vehicle production capacity entirely to the Chinese market. If Tesla further reduces prices, this could pose a great pressure to China's new energy vehicle enterprises. In the rapidly developing new energy vehicle markets of the United States and Europe, the resistance to Chinese products has significantly increased. Data shows that in 2022, China, Europe and the US accounted for 64%, 22% and 9% of global new energy vehicle sales, with the three regions comprising 95% of total sales. After passing the Inflation Reduction Act in August last year, there was a requirement to increase the proportion of key materials sourced, processed and protected from the US and its allies. The European Commission also officially released the European Critical Raw Materials Act on March 16 this year. The law stipulates that by 2030, 
The European Union aims to produce at least 10%, process at least 40%, and recycle 15% of critical raw materials internally each year. These new regulations in Europe and America pose significant obstacles for China's EV and battery exports, leaving the future of China's new energy vehicle industry fraught with uncertainty. Tesla's global strategy could lead to fierce competition for China's new energy vehicles not only in Europe and America, but also elsewhere. In the domestic market, due to battery technology innovations by Toyota and Honda, along with Tesla's low-cost strategy, Chinese electric vehicle EV manufacturers are facing severe competition. Industry giants such as BYD and Cherry are seeing a gradual decline in sales and market share. This year, BYD set a sales target of 3 million units, but in the first four months, it sold approximately 760,000 units only. Moreover, due to sluggish sales, part of the BYD factory in Changsha has suspended production, eliminating overtime opportunities for employees and reducing their wages, leading to staff resignations. Among Chinese EV manufacturers, financial reports from NIO, Li and Xpeng show that apart from Li Auto, both NIO and Xpeng have suffered significant losses. NIO's net loss reached 4.8 billion yuan, an increase of 165.9% from the same period last year and a decrease of 18.1% from the previous quarter. Xpeng's net loss was 2.34 billion yuan, a decrease of 45.9% from the same period last year. These figures starkly highlight the difficulties of the Chinese EV market where vehicles are not selling. NIO expects its Q2 2023 vehicle deliveries to range between 23,000 and 25,000 units, down approximately 8.2% to 0.2% compared to Q2 2022. For Xpen, its vehicle profit margin has turned from positive to negative, dropping to negative 2.5%, effectively incurring a loss on each car sold. This is the first time this has happened since Q3 2020. Expen's founder revealed that they are primarily focusing on the market segment of 200,000 to 350,000 yuan, which is also the most fiercely competitive price range among domestic automakers. The price of BYD's newly launched Han DMI Champion Edition has decreased to 190,000 yuan, and yet Expen's P7i model is starting at over 240,000 yuan, casting a shadow over its prospects. Li Auto, which has performed relatively better than NIO and Xpen, has not incurred losses due to its conservative operating strategy. However, whether Li Auto can continue to avoid losses in the face of technological innovation from Toyota and Honda and further price reductions by Tesla remains to be seen. Currently, China's entire auto industry seems to have entered a winter season. At the recent BYD shareholders meeting, the chairman stated that the market has entered an era of supply exceeding demand. Similarly, the chairman of GAC Group stated at the Chongqing Auto Forum in June that the growth rate of China's auto industry would depart from double-digit increases and enter a phase of minimal growth. This also implies that losses may deepen and the possibility of corporate bankruptcy could significantly increase. Over the past two to three years, many automakers have vanished, including emerging manufacturers such as Byton and WM Motor, part of the Four Little Dragons. Levdio has filed for bankruptcy and companies like Enovate and Aways have ceased production. The Hengqing New Energy Factory only resumed production at the end of May, but its output has significantly reduced, still some distance from a full recovery as stated by the Evergrande Group. In an effort to salvage the new energy vehicle market, the Chinese government, as usual, is forcing the lower class people to foot the bill. This time, the plan is to sell these stockpiled new energy vehicles to the farmers. On June 16, 
five departments, including the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, the National Development and Reform Commission, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs, simultaneously launched the 2023 New Energy Vehicles to the Countryside Initiative in Huishan of Jiangsu Province, Chonghai of Hainan Province, and Jingmen of Hubei Province. The first batch of nearly 70 models will cover more than a dozen counties and cities in China. Local areas will stimulate rural consumption through subsidies, consumer vouchers and discounts on electric charging. This initiative will last from June until December. However, farmers are not keen on this initiative, believing that the purchase price of 150,000 yuan with only a 500 yuan subsidy does not ignite any consumption enthusiasm. With an estimated annual sale of 7 million new energy passenger cars, each car can receive a subsidy of about 18,500 yuan, which is clearly an eye-catching figure. Despite the generous subsidies, there are problems. To obtain subsidies, many car companies have produced a large number of low-quality new energy vehicles, such as those with short driving ranges. These vehicles are difficult to sell on the market and end up in inventory or become shared cars or ride-hailing vehicles. Even with these subsidies, consumers are still reluctant to purchase new energy vehicles. The reasons are twofold. A shortage of charging stations, and in China, many people live in apartments without underground parking. Even those with underground parking do not have charging stations available, and the rent can be as high as over 100 US dollars per month, and even more expensive with a charging station. China has 760,000 fast charging stations, but over 70% of public fast charging stations are only distributed in 10 provinces, while the other 20 provinces only have 30% of the public charging stations. In addition, the charging time at fast charging stations is much longer than refueling time, and everyone is waiting for the arrival of solid state batteries. Under these circumstances, how can the new energy vehicles using current batteries be sold? Furthermore, the widespread economic slowdown in China has also impacted the sales of new energy vehicles. The executive meeting of the State Council of China stressed the promotion of the new energy vehicle industry and policies such as central bank interest rate cuts were put forward, but the market did not achieve the desired effect. Therefore, Liu Xiaoguang, a professor of National Development Strategy Research at Renmin University of China, commented that China has fallen into the 5-20%. The youth unemployment rate exceeds 20%. Industrial profits decrease by 20%. Local government revenue decreased by 20%. Consumer confidence gap is as high as 20%. And real estate construction decreased by 20%. He believes that these are the biggest obstacles hindering the rebound of China's economy. Consequently, he proposed a unique policy to issue 1.5 trillion yuan each year until 2035, that is, to give 1,000 yuan per person per year to stimulate the economy until 2035. As interest rate cuts no longer stimulate the economy and there are no orders for foreign trade exports, the idea is to give out money directly for the people to buy products made in China, continuing this until 2035 in the hope that the economy will adjust. In the development of China's new energy vehicle industry, there is another severe problem. The six Chinese battery companies that held 60% of the global market share last year have found themselves stockpiling inventory and having difficulties expanding into overseas markets. According to official Chinese data, the inventory of batteries continues to climb this year. From January to May, the cumulative production of power batteries in China was 233.5 gigawatt hours, and the increase in power battery inventory reached 68.4 gigawatt hours, which is a quarter of the production. Overproduction is even more serious for lithium iron phosphate batteries, which Chinese enterprises have heavily developed in recent years. In the first five months of this year, 
the cumulative production of lithium iron phosphate batteries in China was 151.3 gigawatt hours, and the increase in inventory within five months was 57.1 gigawatt hours, a third of the production. At the end of 2022, these Chinese companies still had an inventory of 183.2 gigawatt hours of power batteries, accounting for 33.6 percent of the total annual production. Therefore, cumulative inventory as of the end of May this year stands at 251.6 gigawatt hours of power batteries. This number is already equivalent to 85.4 percent of China's total power battery installation capacity of 294.6 gigawatt hours last year. Starting from October this year, the European Union will implement a trial carbon tariff, charging based on the carbon content of imported products. This will make imported products bear the same carbon emission costs as local industries in the EU. Although initially covering only six types of products, including cement, electricity, fertilizers, steel, aluminium, and hydrogen, it is expected that this may extend to products related to new energy vehicles in the future. According to a comprehensive report, China's new energy vehicles build dreams in Europe, jointly released by KPMG China and KPMG Europe this month. If upstream and downstream enterprises of China's new energy vehicles, such as power battery companies, hope to expand to the European market, they must strengthen the production of raw materials in Europe. According to statistics from China's ITDCW website, the number of overseas factories built by Chinese lithium battery companies has reached 28, and the total planned production capacity of 20 factories that have announced their plans has exceeded 506.5 gigawatt hours. However, during Chinese government's two sessions, when faced with the proposal of globalization of China's new energy industry by the chairman of battery manufacturing company CATL. Xi Jinping did not express support, but instead emphasized risk prevention. For the CCP, it is reluctant to see Chinese new energy companies establish factories overseas because of the risk of capital outflows and weakened control. However, Chinese manufacturers have been striving to increase production capacity and seize market share, and much of the surplus power battery capacity can be for the international market. Therefore, despite the difficulties, these companies must go global. Lastly, let's focus on the investment strategy of investor Warren Buffett and his company Berkshire Hathaway in the field of new energy vehicles. From August last year to May this year, the company reduced its holdings of BYD's listed stock on the Hong Kong stock market 11 times, and now holds less than nine percent of BYD's shares. It is worth noting that Buffett and his vice chairman Charlie Munger have stated that the reason for reducing the holdings of BYD is to avoid competing with Elon Musk. Musk has incredible talent and a smart mind. He enjoys taking on impossible tasks and accomplishing them. Therefore, they wisely chose to avoid competing with Musk's company. This change in strategy by Buffett and his team reflects their recognition of Musk's dominance in the electrical vehicle market. BYD, as a competitor to Tesla, has lost the support of Buffett, a powerful strategic investor.